Hello, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about the deeper cause of diabetes, okay? Now, in order to figure this out, or figure out any problem out, we just have to understand what actually is the condition diabetes. So this video is about understanding what it really is uh, a lot deeper. Um, typically, when you think about diabetes, you always think about high blood sugar, right? A1C, it's an average of three months of high blood sugar. You do a fasting blood sugar. Okay, that's how you diagnose diabetes. Go to the doctor. Diabetes is high sugar, right? But let's go deeper. What causes the high sugar? That's the question. What controls the balance of sugar is insulin. And insulin has many functions, but one main function is to act as a cellular key to allow glucose to go in the cell. Um, another function is to lower sugar. So the obvious thing is that Diabetes really is an insulin deficiency, okay? That's really what's causing it because if there wasn't enough insulin, the sugar is going to go high. That's why it's high in the first place. And when you have insulin deficiency, especially in a pre-diabetic state called insulin resistance or just diabetes in type 2 in general, um, you have a situation where your body makes more insulin to compensate for the insulin deficiency, <laughs> Okay, so if you look at the cell, the cell absorbs insulin and it's supposed to then create a, a, an effect of lowering the blood sugar. So with insulin resistance, the receptor starts blocking right here. And then a signal is sent to the pancreas and of course it's going to start making more and more insulin so we can drive that communication into the cell. But the first thing that happens is an insulin deficiency. So diabetes is an insulin deficiency, okay? So let's look at the big picture. Here we have a situation where we have insulin resistance, okay? Really, resistance means ignoring. Now, why would this little receptor ignore insulin? That's what I wanna talk about next, and that's really the key to understanding the whole picture. Insulin is a hormone. Hormones follow the law of communication. So just like in, in life, um, why would, um, you ignore someone, typically because they're obsessively communicating. You ever talk to someone who just will not shut up? They keep talking over and over and over. I mean, you'll be looking at something else over here and they continue to communicate obsessively as you're paying attention to them. So obviously they're not in the present time, right? Well, the same thing happens with the body. There's obviously too much obsessive communication, too much obsessive insulin, that's then causing the cell to ignore uh, that hormone. Okay, that's really what diabetes is. Your little cells are ignoring insulin. So then the next question is, what causes obsessive insulin secretion? That's where I have my favorite book, Guyton's Physiology. And the reason I use physiology books is because you get, it gives it the basic understanding that usually does not change over time. It usually stays consistent. It's how the body works. Control of insulin secretion. So we want to know what controls or what triggers insulin to go up. What raises insulin, right? First thing it says, formerly it was believed that insulin secretion is controlled almost entirely by blood glucose concentration. Okay? So we basically had this idea that a raise in insulin was only coming from high glucose in the blood, which is after a carbohydrate meal or too much sugar. Um, so that's one cause right here, because right up here it says insulin secretion increases almost tenfold within three to five minutes after elevation of blood glucose. So you eat sugar, eat refined carbs, eat carbohydrates in general, you're going to spike insulin, sometimes by tenfold down here. It says, as the concentration of blood glucose rises above 100 milligrams per deciliter of blood, that's normal blood sugar. That's like one teaspoon of sugar in a, a gallon and a half of blood, your entire body of blood. Okay? So one teaspoon. It says right here, as the concentrations of blood glucose rise above that, so that's like more than one teaspoon, <laughs> the rate of insulin secretion rises rapidly, reaching peaks some 10 to 30 times the level of blood glucose concentrations. That's a tremendous amount of spike in your sugar, okay? So number one, what will cause an obsessive communication is 
glucose or sugar or carbs, mainly refined carbs. Okay, that's number one. Number two, second page, other factors that stimulate insulin secretion. Amino acids, that's protein. It says right here, amino acid administration in the absence of a rise in blood glucose cause only a small increase in insulin secretion. Basically, it's telling us that protein or amino acids can cause a small rise in insulin. Okay? It's not, a, it's not obviously a, as much as uh, sugar, but it's, it's definitely a small rise. Then it goes on to say, however, when administered at the same time, a blood glucose concentration is elevated, the glucose-induced secretion of insulin may be as much as doubled in the presence of the excess amino acids. What does that mean? It means that if you add sugar or glucose with amino acids, primarily excessive amino acids, okay, maybe too much, you're going to double the insulin. And this is what I've talked about in other videos. You take a hot dog with the bun, the ketchup on the meat, you add those two together, uh, fries, a Coke uh, with your burger, uh, like the, the uh, breaded uh, meats, all this sugar with the meat will double your insulin. So you don't want to do that. That's the combination of those two things. Next thing. So we know sugar, protein to some degree, the protein with sugar to a, a greater degree. The third thing, gastrointestinal hormones. Okay, what is that? Well, basically hormones that are triggered in your digestive system when you eat. Okay? It says the gastrointestinal hormones almost double the rate of insulin secretion following an average meal. What does that mean? It means that eating in general triggers insulin. Okay? So we got sugar, protein, sugar with protein, and eating triggers insulin. Other hormones and the autonomic nervous system will also do it too. That's another trigger, mainly cortisol. Now cortisol is a stress hormone, so stress will also increase insulin as well. But nowhere on this page, in this chapter, in this book, does it say that saturated fats triggers insulin. So saturated fats is not the cause of diabetes or insulin resistance. It's not in the physiology books, okay? So really, this is why when you go on a intermittent fasting, ketogenic diet, you keep your carbs low, below like between 20 and 50 grams. When you don't have excessive protein, and you definitely don't combine protein with sugar, you're going to improve diabetes and insulin resistance, okay? That's really what's causing it. Does that make sense? So if we don't trigger insulin as much, it can heal and this resistance will go away and the body will start balancing out. So check out this great little demo on an actual person who applied this information. 20, I was kind of diagnosed with high cholesterol and high triglycerides. And a lot of it was hereditary. My dad had it, had all this as well. And that kind of started a chain of events for the next 20 years of me fighting high cholesterol, high triglycerides, metabolic syndrome, and finally led to severe insulin resistance. And the pre-keto, I was on uh, metformin twice a day. I was on, I believe it was Crestor, and I was on a blood pressure pill twice a day. And now the only thing I take is a fish oil and magnesium. I have my latest blood work. I just had this done like, like two weeks ago, if I can tell you the numbers real quick. Um, my total cholesterol now is 241. My LDL is 151. My HDL is 70. And triglycerides are 55. See, triglycerides are probably one of the best indicators, and you're, you're totally fine. You're right. running on ketones big and time. I had the particle test, the particle test done with this as well, and the whole thing is in the large fluffy category. So it's perfect. That is so incredible. Um, one question on that. Um, your father, is he still around? No. No, I lost him to heart disease uh, 11 years ago. Grain fed to grass fed beef and butter, pasture raised eggs, um, no artificial sweeteners. Uh, right now we use um, stevia for our sweetener in our coffee. So we, we just made a huge change. Um, since then, so we're now July, 
I am now, I checked, I weigh myself every Sunday. I'm 192 pounds. Um, my last month, my doctor um, advised me that my diabetes has been reversed. I have uh, an A1C of 5.2, I believe, or 5.4, one of those two. My triglycerides went from 1375 to um, a little over 100. That's normal. Um, everything has just improved. All my markers have improved. Cholesterol is level. It's normal. Wow. A dramatic change. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, press this little button down below, okay? Thanks.